Guys, I figured it out. I found Sony's biggest weakness, and it might shock some of you guys. So, we're gonna talk about it in this video, and may just trigger some people. But either way, let's get started. So there's no secret that I've been basically telling you guys about Sony's products and how they are not fantastic. And you want to know who the problem has been kind of labeled as? This guy. Now, the problem with that is, simply put, I don't make Sony products. And I have no control over what they create. I only tell you how things are. Which leads me to Sony's biggest weakness. Their fans. Their die-hard customers. Because, you see, every person, and I kid you not, every single person damage controlling for Sony when they do things like make a 40% recycled television and literally charge three, four grand for it. They promise you things like variable refresh rate and don't deliver on it until like a couple years later. They, they do things, right, that aren't maybe the best for consumers. And when I talk about that, like having really bad motion on things like the A90J with it having a lot of motion blur and artifacts that make the image break apart and do crazy things. When I mention these things, I'm the problem, I'm the Sony hater. But the thing is, I kind of want to address this because this is going to hurt a lot of Sony fans in the long run. See, the rest of us on other brands or people like myself who don't really care one way or another, we're fine, right? We're totally fine. But you guys, not so much. Because what's happening now, you have a market that's getting ever competitive. Sony is in their own head now. They are literally being gassed up by you guys. That's right. You guys are gassing Sony up. You're telling them that they don't need to improve. You're telling them that we love what you're doing. And when there's no need to improve and your customers already love everything you're doing, you're going to get the same exact thing. And I think this is a negative message to send to Sony because they have a lot of room to improve. A lot. And if you take the other brands that are coming up like Hisense and TCL, you see what LG's doing, you see what pretty much everybody else is doing, everybody is taking it seriously. Sony, on the other hand, is taking it a little easy and riding their coattails and giving you things that don't compete competitively with what they were doing back in 2017 and back in 2019 with their 4K HDR X1 processing chip or their X1 Extreme chip. I've proven that on this channel. And my point of this video is to simply put, if you're somebody who's a true Sony fan, this video, for anyone wondering, is being shot on a Sony A7R Mark II. Okay, that's how long I've been with Sony's full frame line alone, not even considering all the alpha cameras. Who here remembers the A77, the A58? Like, come on, man, way beyond. Like, we, we know Sony has great products. That's not the question here. The question is, with the testament of time, is Sony making products that build upon that already great foundation? And the answer is no. They're going the route of cheaper materials, build quality that's totally plastic in some cases. So it feels like you're just buying an entry-level set. Massive premiums. And they use this processing theory with the XR processor. I've proven again, like I said in uh, a few seconds ago, that they're not really holding up to what they used to do from a contrast perspective, a dynamic range perspective. Like, they're not delivering a true noticeable improvement over what they've done. And I think if you own these TVs from 2017 and 2019 and, you know, so on and so forth, you can prove these things. But most of these reviewers don't. And one of the most frustrating things that I see coming out of the Sony campaign is this singular question singular rebuttal that i'm going to address now i watched on another channel or most reviewers say that it's great it's the best one of the best they've ever seen why are you the only one that says different well bud the other guys are kind of in the business of telling you everything's the best you know why because at the end of the day they're getting a commission all of them in some aspect or another have blue affiliate links for you to buy off of their stores I don't do that. I don't I don't care if you don't like the product or not because I don't have a vested interest in Sony. I'm not like Vincent Tio getting plugged on Sony's website. I don't care if you like these products or not. I'm going to tell you how they perform versus what they used to do and if Sony is really still Sony. And the answer is a resounding no. And then, of course, the backlash, the hatred rains down on the only guy willing to say that. Because, unfortunately, we, we I hate to say this, have a pathetic society where everyone's sensitive, everybody wants to get in their feelings, everything's about... 
hey, you know, let me lie to make you feel good about you instead of telling you that maybe maybe there's something you could do to improve. Maybe there's something you could do to better yourself. And this is the world that we live in. We all know it. And the reality is when you watch these reviews that fluff up Sony for like little noticeable, you know, changes to UI things like, you know, oh, they moved a couple settings around or they moved a couple naming structures around and put a new marketing jargon like Triluminous Max. Like, why are we not talking about the fact that it's 2022? They announced recently, I'm the only one that's going to say this on video so far. I haven't heard a single person say it. I'll be the first, okay? Put it on your calendar, the first. It's 2022. We got new information by these golden children of the UK who've been overlooked and neglected and you know, so on and so forth. And I think it's funny that they told him in plain English there's only two HDMI 2.1 ports in 2022. And these are going to go for massive premiums like every year. Meanwhile, LG has full 48 gigabits per second bandwidth. Are we not like Sony is immediately like at a disadvantage here, like immediately because you're already offering less out the gate and I haven't even seen your product yet. And that is, that is huge for people who want to stay future-proofed, who want to stay in the know, and who want to know when they're buying, they're buying the absolute most their dollars can afford them. And again, I'm going to put it to you like this in a very real-world context. I'm not rich, and I'm not poor either. I work for every damn thing I have like you guys do. Look at the fucking housing market. Pardon my French. I mean, everything is so expensive nowadays. You can't even find a good house. If you do, it's a really nice house in a bad neighborhood. And if it's not that, then you have to have basically over half a million dollars in many cases to get a really good safe home in a nice safe area. And if it's not that, then you're being overcharged on rent. Yes, the infamous rent game. And what I try to do for the one time you're going to take out of your day and out of this stressful life of literally worrying about what you're going to do and how you're going to fucking survive, I try to listen to everyday people that I'm around every day, you know, in the world, and, and make sure you're not getting ripped off when you're using your disposable income because it's hard to come by these days, right? Okay, and I'm trying to make sure that everybody gets a fair deal for their dollar. If you don't like that kind of thing, hey, that's got nothing to do with me. But at the end of the day, I am trying to help you. I really am. And I think that by telling Sony, you're perfect, you're great, you're the best, you're an industry leader, you're fantastic. There is Sony, lens to living room. They've always been fantastic. Hey, Sony is my guy. Hey, I've been repping Sony from day one. Team Sony, Sony's king. I've literally seen people call Sony God. Like, this is how, like, delusional the Sony fan base is. And I would simply say to these people, take a step down from that mentality and start looking at them not as a brand you love, as a product. Because that is ultimately what you are buying, right? You're working. You didn't get handed that money for free, I would assume, and you want to make sure it's a fair trade. So my message is simply this. Let's start holding Sony accountable. All of you guys out there, by the way, watching FOMO, Tech Giant, Be The Installer, Villa Man, HDTV Test, Vincent T.O., and the list of you. Start holding them accountable for things they do wrong. We can see them get better. If we are truly tech enthusiasts, I'm reaching out to you. This is an olive branch to everybody, even independent guys, okay? If you are truly serious about Sony getting better, technology getting better, talk about the flaws that you see and let them know, hey, this ain't so hot. You need to fix that. Button that up. Compared to this, you are doing X, Y, and Z. And give real reasons, examples of how you got to that logic and show them what they need to improve on. If you can do this, we will see the best consumer products we've ever seen ever come out of that. But of course, of course, there's no money in being honest because if you show all their flaws, they're not going to make the sales for 2022. And I guess maybe the commissions won't be so high and maybe, God, wouldn't that suck? But in the end, if we wind up with better products that help everybody out, I think maybe that might be a sacrifice. Maybe some of you can afford to make it your income level. That being said, I hope this message reaches every Sony customer loud and clear. Their biggest weakness is you. It starts with the mindset of telling them they're too good to fail, too big to fail. Stop doing that. Let them know they failed at something. It's okay. And it's as simple as that.